In 2016, DeepMind's AlphaGo surprised many people by beating a top-level professional at the game of Go. This achievement was a big step for artificial intelligence, happening several years ahead of expert predictions. The next year, DeepMind showed the algorithm behind AlphaGo was able to learn the rules and strategy of Go by only playing against itself. It did not require a corpus of expert human play or Go-specific tuning. In 2018, a more general version of this algorithm, called AlphaZero, was able to obtain superhuman levels of play for two more classical board games, Shogi and Chess. The third iteration, and the topic of this video, is Mu Zero. A Mu Zero agent can learn to play board games, Atari games, and optimize video compression settings. The authors claim Mu Zero agents are general purpose enough to learn the rules and constraints for many different environments. Like its predecessor, AlphaGo, the core parts of Mu Zero are neural networks and tree search. In this video, we will dive into the details of how that combination of techniques can learn extremely effective strategies without human guidance. Consider the game of tic-tac-toe. Even more concretely, consider this board state laid in the game, with X to make the next move. We want the agent to be able to find the best move, one that maximizes its chance of winning. By understanding this example with tic-tac-toe, I hope you develop an intuition for how Mu Zero works for the more advanced games and tasks in its repertoire. We will develop this intuition in four parts. First, we will look at the main components of a Mu Zero agent, including three connected neural networks. The bulk of this video will show how an AI technique called tree search can discover a winning strategy. After that, we will see how to teach the agent the strategy discovered by tree search, so it can get better and better. The video concludes with a demonstration of that improvement. The tools we need to answer our question include three neural networks, focusing on different tasks. The first is called the representation network, and it will learn to understand the board, also called the state. I think of this network as the state interpreter, because it has the state as an input, and it interprets that state for the other two networks. The second is called the dynamics network, and it learns the mechanics of the game. The inputs are the interpretation of the state and an action. It learns how the state and actions interact, and then outputs any points scored, also called rewards. This is my favorite network because it will learn the rules of the game from the interpreted states and observed actions, not by programmers hand coding logic. Both the representation and the dynamics network output a hidden state, very similar to what we saw in recurrent neural networks. I use these filled green arrows to indicate the hidden state in all future diagrams. The hidden state also feeds into the prediction network, which I think of as the strategy advisor, because its outputs are used to make strategic moves, also called actions. One of the predicted outputs is called the policy. These are the most promising actions from a given state. The other predicted output is called the value, a number that predicts future rewards. Put another way, the value indicates if a state is closer to winning or to losing. Just to make sure we are all on the same page with these concepts, let's see a concrete example using a simplified version of the game Pac-Man. The state is the blue field, the current location of the yellow player, and the locations of the white point pellets. The value, which estimates future rewards, might represent how many points are available to collect. In this game, the actions we could take are move up, down, left, or right. The policy of this state consists of the directions left, right, and down, because going up would collide with the top of the field. The player takes the move right action and scores a reward of one point because they eat the pellet on the space they move to. After taking an action, the game ends up in a new state. The new state can have a different value or different policy. For example, there are fewer points to collect, so the value might be lower, and the move right action is no longer helpful. Returning to tic-tac-toe, the locations of the player's tokens are the state. The policy consists of any of the empty spaces. Players alternate taking actions. An action is placing their token in a location. In board games like tic-tac-toe, all rewards are zero until the action taken results in a win. We can interpret the value to mean something like, how likely will a player win after making that action? For example, a value of positive 0.7 means winning is somewhat likely. A value of negative 0.9 means losing is very likely. A value of 1.0 means a win is certain, and a value of 0 would mean a tie or an even position. Learning how to compute the value and policy for a state, that is, learning strategy, is one of the key ideas in Mu0 which we will explore in detail. Initially, the three neural networks in the Mu0 agent are completely untrained and have random outputs. For the sake of explanation, 
I want you to imagine that the agent's networks are partially trained. Assume the networks can identify legal moves and can detect a win or loss. However, the networks do not yet know what the good moves are or if the player is winning or losing. If you are curious about this partially trained network, there is one implemented in the spreadsheet linked on screen and in the description. The key idea, and what we will explore next, is how the Mu0 agent combines its neural networks with a tree search algorithm in order to discover that optimal strategy. For this example state, we will see how tree search finds the best action is placing an X in the upper right location, and the other two actions are not as good. Before we get into the core loop of the tree search algorithm, we have a little bit of setup. We get the state of the game from the tic-tac-toe game engine. That same game engine tells us the legal moves at this position. For our starting position, and each position after one of these actions, we make nodes to track some search-related data. To make things clearer, I show the action and the board position, even though Mu0 only remembers what actions were taken. The last part of setup is to ask our prediction network for an evaluation of the current position. Remember, we are assuming the prediction network does not yet know if a given state is good or bad, thus the value predicted by the neural network is zero. This predicted value, along with the rewards we eventually get from the dynamics network, go into the tree search algorithm's assessment of the tree node, which I call the tree search value. We will see more about tree search value later, but do note that we have two distinct quantities called value one from the neural network, and one from tree search. Both values try to measure the same thing, how good a state is, but they come from different places. The prediction network also produces a policy. Again, the prediction network has not yet learned strategy, so we will assume it outputs all three valid moves with equal probability of 0.333. With the setup complete, we can look at the three main steps of the tree search algorithm, selection, evaluation and expansion, and tree update. The last step is also called backpropagation, but it has nothing to do with neural network training, so I call it tree update to avoid confusion. The tree search algorithm first selects a leaf node connected to our starting node. Selection depends on upper confidence bound, or UCB for short. The UCB formula is somewhat complicated. We'll see the details later, but for now, keep in mind these important ideas. The UCB is positively correlated to the policy and tree search value. Both are indications that this might be a good strategic move and requires further investigation. The UCB also goes up the more the parent node and sibling nodes are visited, but down when the node itself is visited. Intuitively, caring about visits will encourage the search process to occasionally look at other promising moves. Finally, when selecting a path along our tree, we always select the node with the highest upper confidence bound that is, the highest UCB quantity. All three child nodes have the same UCB, so we can select any one. To make things consistent, I will always select the leftmost node in the event of a tie. With that leftmost node selected, it is time to evaluate and expand this node. The evaluation substep involves the representation and the dynamics network applying the node's action to the previous game state. The hidden state from the dynamics network is passed to the prediction network to predict the value after taking that action. Because we are still pretending the prediction network has not yet learned strategy, it will output a value of zero. The prediction network also outputs a policy, which we use to expand the selected node by creating children nodes, representing the moves the opponent could take. The predicted policy tells us that there are two moves, each equally likely, so we expand those two nodes and set the policy to 50% each. Any invalid moves have a policy of 0% and are not shown here. The dynamics network outputs a reward, but that will be zero for a while, so I'm going to ignore the reward until it is non-zero and matters to the calculations. The tree update step recalculates the upper confidence bounds. First, we add one to the visit count for our root node and the node we expanded. The tree search value ends up not changing because both the value and the reward are zero. As a result of increasing visit counts, the node we just selected and expanded has a lower UCB than its two siblings. That concludes one iteration of tree search, so we start again. The starting node has two children tied for maximum UCB, so we break the tie by selecting the middle node. The evaluation and expansion step is very similar to the first iteration. It uses the policy to pencil in two more nodes for the legal actions, both equally likely. During tree update, we add one to the visit counts of the parent node and the node we just visited and recalculate the upper confidence bounds. 
Iteration 3 of Tree Search selects the far right node, which now has the largest UCB. The evaluation and expansion step is very similar to the previous iterations. The tree update step again adds to the appropriate visit counts and recalculates the UCBs. So far, the tree searching is similar to breadth first search because no move appears better than any others. The selection step of iteration 4 illustrates a small detail I omitted earlier. When selecting a node, we always traverse to a leaf node of the tree. At each branch, we select the node with the largest UCB until we get down to an unexpanded leaf node. Here, due to our leftmost tie breaking, the algorithm walks all the way down the left side of the tree. The evaluation step now uses the dynamics network twice because we need to have it think two moves ahead before making predictions about that state. This is why the Mu0 authors created three modular neural networks. They can recombine them in different ways. The partially trained prediction network still outputs the value at zero as before. The predicted policy identifies one legal move, so we expand the selected leaf node accordingly. The tree update step adds one to all nodes in the action sequence between the leaf and the root, and recalculates the UCB for those affected nodes. The UCB for nodes we visited went down or stayed the same, and the other nodes UCB went up, encouraging tree search to keep expanding in breadth. Iteration 5 plays out similarly, walking down the nodes with the highest UCB, selecting it, expanding the one legal node, and recalculating UCBs. Let's pause the animations for a moment to look at the formula for upper confidence bound. This spreadsheet tracks all the quantities that go into the UCB formula. This column tracks which actions have been taken. For example, XO dash means the first player put an X in the upper left corner, the second player put an O in the upper right corner, and the bottom right corner is empty. The player column indicates who made the action to get to the node. I think of this as who owns the tree node. The children column reminds us where the branches are. They correspond to the arrows from the previous diagrams. In the Mu0 paper, they show this as their upper confidence bound formula. It's pretty busy, so let's break it down. The P function represents the policy, as noted in column E. When the policy goes up, the UCB also goes up, representing potentially better moves. The Q function represents the tree search value. Computing the tree search value involves adding rewards and values and dividing by total visits. These have all been zero so far because we have not found any winning moves yet. When we do find a winning move, the tree search value will go up, as will the UCB. The n function corresponds to the number of times the tree search algorithm has visited a particular node. Specifically, the algorithm uses the square root of the number of parent visits divided by one plus the number of node visits. This is what I meant by parent visits making the UCB go up and the number of node visits making the UCB go down. These four terms are the core of the UCB formula. Ignoring the rest for now, what happens if you could search indefinitely and we visit this child node a large number of times? Pause the video now if you want a moment to think. To visit the child, we must also visit the parent but the square root term means the denominator will win out and the fraction goes to zero. This means UCB eventually ignores the policy. That is, it will ignore the initial prediction of good moves. This allows Mu0 to initially explore moves that the prediction network felt were promising and eventually spend more time exploiting moves which the dynamics network finds are actually good. The rest of the formula uses some constants and other terms to tune the balance between exploring and exploiting. I set up this sheet to show how the calculation of UCB changes over time. If I adjust this yellow number to a 1, the computations reset to after the first iteration. Because the tree search values are a 0 early on, only the UCBs are really interesting to watch. Iteration 11 is where we find a winning move and things change. The partially trained prediction network has been outputting values of 0 and equally likely policy probabilities because the network is presumed to have not learned strategy or promising moves. The dynamics network, however, has learned the rules of the game in that it can correctly estimate rewards. Iteration 11 is where the tree search finds an action sequence which results in a reward of 1, that is, a player wins due to getting 3 in a row. It found the winning actions by following the maximum UCBs as before. This means the terminal node has a reward of 1 for the X player. We add 1 to the visit counts of each node in the selected action sequence, 
then the reward affects tree search values along the action sequence, making them non-zero. To understand how these tree search values are calculated, let's go back to our Pac-Man example for a moment. Suppose our tree search iteration has selected this series of three actions after an initial state. During the evaluation step, the dynamics network estimates a reward for the final action, and the prediction network predicts a value for the final state. Because these happen after the third action, let's call them R3 and V3 for short. V3 is going to affect the tree search value for this final node and all nodes before it in the sequence. R3 is going to affect all nodes except the last node. Remember, rewards are given to actions, not states. So the most recent reward does not impact the state after the action resolved. Earlier rewards are applied to earlier states along the action sequence as well. For each of these nodes, we add the appropriate rewards and values to a running value sum. This sum is divided by the total number of visits to get the tree search value. Effectively, this makes the tree search value the average number acquired from estimated rewards and values while searching through the available actions. Tic-tac-toe is a zero-sum game, so we need to adjust the value sums. The states for the opposing player subtract the rewards and values that come after them, because if one player wins, the other player must lose. Remember that nodes and states belong to the player who made the last move. I mixed this up several times as I was learning and even as I was preparing this video. In the worksheet, we can see the tree search value calculation in action. The tree search value column divides the value sum by the visit count. This cell sums up the reward from the child nodes times how many times it was visited, and likewise for the value produced by the prediction network. This if handles the first time we visit the node when we expand it. Because this node is a non-terminal node, that is, the node is not the end of the game, we only include the node's neural network value to the value sum once the first visit, and the only time it is the last node in an action sequence. This subtraction happens here because the child nodes all belong to the opponent. The computation is similar for these other nodes. For nodes earlier in the tree, we need to account for all the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Hopefully it's more clear why the tree search values alternate between negative and positive values as we go back in time. That is the result of players alternating turns. Additionally, the absolute value gets smaller and smaller because of the increasing visit counts for nodes closer to the root. The positive tree search value increased the UCB for this middle node, indicating it might be a better move. The negative tree search value dramatically decreased the UCB for the visited child, corresponding to the idea that a savvy opponent is unlikely to choose a losing move. The next iteration selects an action sequence through the same middle node, but avoids the move that lost previously. All this is a consequence of following the maximum upper confidence bounds at each branch. The dynamics network should identify this as a winning action as well, and estimate a reward of 1. The tree update adds 1 to all nodes visited, and updates the value sums, which in turn updates the tree search values. The increased tree search value for the middle action increases the UCB even more, which will encourage further search down that path. After 12 iterations, tree search seems to be heading towards finding the best move. Fast forwarding to after iteration 59, tree search has eventually tried all possible moves for the active player and the opponent, but most of the searching was done on the promising middle move, which we the humans can see is a guaranteed win for the X player. Remember, the question we were asking was, what is the best move? Eventually, we have to stop searching and return an answer, usually based on a game timer or something like that. We can find the answer by looking at which move was visited the most by tree search, because the tree search algorithm will tend to visit better moves more often. Let's stop the tree search process here, but know that MuZero did 800 iterations for chess, Go, and Shogi. In a more complex game, there might be multiple moves that the tree search found promising, so we need to create a policy from the tree search results to help select the move. We do this by counting up how many times we visited each of the child nodes from our starting node, and filling in zeros for all possible moves, even those that were not valid. To compute the policy, we divide all the visit counts by our total tree search iterations, and color code the resulting probabilities to make the diagram look nice.
With the policy created, we can now select an action using a weighted random number generator. The Mu0 authors use something called temperature to tune the weighted distribution, and there's a bonus sheet if you want some more details on that. Let us pretend that the weighted random number picked the most probable move, an X in the upper right corner. We tell the game engine the agent selects that action, and the whole process will start over. The starting state and legal moves are provided from the game engine, and the tree search begins from scratch, retaining no data from any previous tree searching. Now, we will explore how to train the three neural networks so the agent can play better next time. The first step, like many machine learning problems, is to gather training data. As the agent has been playing against itself, we collect all the game states. For example, after analyzing the board state from before, we add the state to our list of game states, as well as the policy we computed after tree search, the action the agent selected, and the reward that the game engine awarded for making the action. Note that during tree search we used the estimated rewards, but after making the action, we record the actual reward from the source of truth, the game engine. We keep collecting this data as the game plays out, either until some player wins, or the game ends in a draw. This game will eventually end in a win, so the reward for the final action is 1. This is all the gameplay data collected, but we need to process it a bit before training begins. The prediction network needs to know what values it should predict, so we will create that from the rewards we collected. I made a copy of the rewards and shifted the list right so that it lines up with the corresponding state instead of the action. States and their corresponding values belong to the player who just took an action. For training purposes, we will say any state belonging to the X player is a winning state and has a value of 1. The O player lost, so we will say that any state for them was a losing state and has a value of negative 1. In the event of a tie, a reward of 0 is given out to all states for both players. This is all the data from one game that we need for training. If you are curious how this looks numerically, check out the training data sheet. Recall that the prediction network has an input which is the hidden state from the representation network. The prediction network outputs both a value and a policy. One possible way to train these two networks to work together is to sample the collected gameplay data and say, hey networks, when the representation network sees this state belonging to the O player, the prediction network should predict a value of negative 1 because the O player lost. Also, here is the policy of promising follow-up actions. Then the next training step might randomly select this state and say, predict a value of 1 because the X player went on to win from here, and these were the promising actions. While this approach would work to train these two networks, we need to include the dynamics network as well. We can start with the same setup, labeling the prediction network as prediction number 0. Then we feed the same hidden state from the representation network to the dynamics network number 1, along with the action our agent actually picked during the game. The result from dynamics network 1 feeds into a copy of the prediction network, labeled here as prediction number 1. The value and policy that prediction 1 should output are just the value and policy that come from the state after the sampled state. This now includes all three networks in training, but we really want to be sure the agent can accurately think several actions ahead. To do that, we can unroll the network, that is, repeat this layer again for the next action, creating a copy of the dynamics network, and another copy of the prediction network. All the copies of the prediction network will use the same weights and biases, likewise for the dynamics network copies. In total, the mu0 algorithm has each training step look five actions into the future, using five copies of the dynamics network and six copies of the prediction network. One training step consists of a state and five actions as input, and six values and policies as outputs. The standard backpropagation algorithm will adjust the weights and biases of the neural networks to have outputs closer to this desired result. After training the neural networks on all the states collected by playing many games, we can play some more games with the newly trained networks. These trained networks should play better than before, that is, they should more efficiently find winning actions. Earlier, after the setup for tree search, our nodes look something like this. Note the policy has all moves with the same probability. We can imagine, after training, that our network would have a policy which favors the move in the middle. 
we the humans know that this move leads to a guaranteed win. Because the upper confidence bound is bigger when the policy is bigger, the move in the middle now has the highest UCB instead of there being a tie. Thus, tree search will select the middle node first. The trained prediction network should have learned this state is good for the X player, so when we evaluate the state, we expect the neural network to predict a positive value. This positive neural network value leads directly to a positive tree search value. The predicted policy should still identify the two legal follow-up moves as equally likely because a win is assured regardless. When recalculating upper confidence bounds, the high tree search value for the middle node will boost the UCB for that node, encouraging future exploration there. If we let the tree search algorithm go on for a bit, we can see the tree search continues exploring the middle path until it reaches a winning move in only four simulations. That was about three times faster than when the prediction network had not learned strategy yet. Faster tree searching means the agent is more likely to find winning moves, which means it plays better. If you want to play with how the learned values and policies impact the calculations, check out the sheet called Tree Search Round 2. To recap, the two key ingredients in Mu0 are tree search and three modular neural networks. Tree search finds strategic moves to help the agent win, and the neural networks learn the rules of the game and remember the strategy found by tree search. Better neural networks cause tree searching to find better strategies more quickly, and this creates a positive feedback loop. What I find especially cool about Mu0 is that we do not have to teach it the rules of the game. The representation and dynamics networks should be able to learn those rules from only the observed game states, and not any game-specific programming by us humans. Despite the length of this video, there were some details I had to cut. For example, Mu0 uses a variant of Monte Carlo tree search, but I ran out of time to discuss the differences and to show a cool visualization I found. I encourage you to check out the resources below and to read the notes in the workbook if you want to know more. Happy learning!